uh, carcinomas of thyroid that most of you are familiar okay so first is papillary carcinoma it is most common carcinoma of thyroid okay it's the most common carcinoma of thyroid and it is the one which is having a very good prognosis if they are asking you about histological types of ameloblastomas then follicular is most common so the most common histological type of thyroid carcinoma is papillary carcinoma of thyroid the most common histological type of ameloblastoma is follicular ameloblastoma Diagno prognosis is good with papillary carcinoma of thyroid i told you to remember papillary carcinoma of thyroid i told you to remember two l's one l is talking about the mode of metastasis that is by the lymph the second l is talking about the organ organ first affected by metastasis that is about the lung lung followed by bone okay next coming to the treatment okay so treatment is near total or total thyroidectomy whenever associated lymph nodes are involved i told you lymph nodes are involved right so whenever lymph nodes are involved you have to remove that lymph nodes okay basing upon the number of lymph nodes that are involved okay right so the next one is uh, etiologies okay so sometimes the background history they can give you the patient patient undergone radiotherapy and patient is now having carcinoma of thyroid which carcinoma is more common in the patients who are previously received radiotherapy is okay that is your papillary carcinoma of thyroid this question was given for your medical friends five days back in INICET what is the question that is given is a patient of this particular is previously diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma exposed to radiation therapy along with the chemotherapy after three or four years diagnosed with thyroid carcinoma okay the thyroid carcinoma is papillary carcinoma of thyroid okay so they're asking what is the treatment plan for this papillary carcinoma of thyroid the answer is total thyroidectomy okay one more unique point to be added about papillary carcinoma of thyroid is orphan annie i nucleus okay orphan annie i nucleus and it is most commonly seen in the case of women of 30 to 40 years okay so this is important so can anyone tell me what is the question what is the gene based question which is given in recent INICET already discussed to you in your pro level classes so what is the gene that is responsible for occurrence of papillary carcinoma of thyroid anyone what gene is responsible for occurrence of no, not ret ret is for uh, medullary carcinoma okay right it is b a b r a f v 600 okay it is b r a f v 600 gene this question was recently given in i n i c e t so please do make a few of you are telling it as ret ret is for which which carcinoma of thyroid r e t r e t is for which carcinoma of thyroid r e t is for medullary carcinoma of thyroid again that is a very very important question r e t is for medullary carcinoma of thyroid okay next i want to add a note about occult carcinoma these are like small carcinomas okay so whenever you have a carcinoma or a tumor size less than 1.5 centimeter in diameter okay these are called as occult carcinomas which has excellent prognosis but a little clinical significance okay right clear it's already discussed to you next comes what are these bodies what are these bodies? Yes, these bodies are Samoma bodies, which we have already discussed on the regular activity. And the code for the Samoma bodies is pap smear. Okay, most commonly seen in the case of papillary carcinoma of thyroid. And you can see these are basophilic. So these are basophilic and you can see laminar. Okay, so you can see a laminar like, and these are calcifications basically. Can you tell me what type of calcifications that are regularly seen in the Samoma bodies, which is your general pathology question? What type of calcifications? No, no, not metastatic. Okay. It is basically, yes, it is basically dystrophic calcification. So it is basically dystrophic calcifications that we regularly see in the case of this. Can you tell me what type of calcifications we regularly see in the pulp? Pulp. Pulp stones are which type of calcifications? Yes, pulp stones are dystrophic calcifications. Okay, what are these dystrophic calcifications? I told you to remember D for D. Okay, dystrophic calcifications are the calcifications which are seen in dead and degenerated. Dead and degenerated cells. 
Okay. So whenever you have a dead end degenerated cells on which calcium get deposited, that is called as dystrophic calcifications. Okay. Now tell me, multiple pulp stones are seen in. Multiple pulp stones are seen in. Yes, multiple pulp stones are seen in EDS, Rubberman syndrome, Hiller Dalius syndrome. Okay, right. So can you tell me whenever you have pulp stones or whenever you have an arrow canals, okay, uh, what type of irrigation solution that you regularly use? Please, guys, don't write on my screen. I don't know the setting of this because this is a recorded version. It's going to be so irritating for everyone, repeatedly telling people are doing the same. And then you need to wait for five minutes to clear that. Do, the, all these things are going to disturb the connectivity of the class. Okay. So when I'm jumping to a different subject, I need to be more focused. Okay. Right. So what type of irrigation solution that we regularly use whenever you have pulp stones or whenever you have calcifications is yes, perfectly right. The answer is EDTA. How much percentage EDTA? Yes, someone is telling. Okay, the percentage of EDTA that we regularly use is 17 percentage and pH is 7.3. Can you tell me any other peculiar feature that this EDTA is having? Apart from calcification, yes, right. Very good. Smear layer removal. Very good. Any particular condition where you are going to use EDTA? Any particular condition, any particular treatment of... Okay, EDTA is used in revascularization endodontics in the second appointment. Okay, right. Chalo. I'm just skipping. So as we have already discussed about uh, this occult uh, carcinoma, occult carcinoma is basically, uh, what is the dimension? dimension should be? Yes, dimension should be less than 1.5 centimeter. That is called as occult carcinoma. There is something called as occult caries. So what are the other names of occult caries is hidden caries, fluoride bombs, and fluoride syndrome. Okay. So what is this basically? Whenever you have, whenever you have a caries lesion, caries starts with initial uh, critical pH. Like whenever it hits the critical pH, 5.2 to 5.5. So there will be a demineralization that is started superficially. So what happens like whenever the patient is exposed to more fluorides, the demineralization will, will be remineralized. Means this area, okay, previously demineralized, now it's going to get remineralized. Okay. So what is going to happen? Your remineralization is started. So remineralization is started only in the superficial layer and superficial layer healing takes place. But the remineralization does not start in the deeper layer. So a deeper layer will, will progress over a period of time. Okay. So superficially no caries deep caries will be there. That caries is called as hidden caries because it is hidden, not visible to you clinically, but it can be seen on a radiograph. Okay, So this is called as hidden caries or occult caries or fluoride bomb, fluoride syndrome. Means when I, because of the fluoride, there is a bomb that is hidden. Okay, right? So that is the reason why it is called as occult caries or hidden caries, which cannot be seen. No clinical futures, regularly asked question given, no clinical futures, only radiographic findings. Clear? Okay. Then I'm jumping into the next part that is called as follicular carcinoma. Okay, right. So the first important aspect that I have to make a note. So whenever you are having any thyroid abnormality, what you do first? Whenever you're having initial investigation for thyroid problem, initial investigation for thyroid problem. Whenever I have a thyroid problem, I don't uh, immediately go for FNAC. I'll go for thyroid profile. Among the thyroid profile, that is your T3, T4, TSH, which is, which is best one. Okay. Among these for three, the best one is thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay. So once I'm done with this thyroid profile, the next one is I, I'll be going to for diagnosing of the nodule or diagnosing of the tumor. The best one is FNAC. Okay. That is the best one is 
FNAC. Okay. But what is the point to be noted? FNAC is contraindicated in the case of follicular carcinoma of thyroid. Can anyone tell me what is the reason for contraindication of FNAC? Okay. FNAC is contraindicated in follicular carcinoma of thyroid because FNAC cannot differentiate thyroid carcinoma from thyroid adenoma. Okay. Means adenomas and carcinomas, FNAC cannot determine if it is follicular type. Okay. Next one. Their papillary, I told you to remember L and L. And in follicular, I told you to remember B and B. B for mode of transport is by blood. Okay. And the first organ that is affected is mostly bones. Okay. And the treatment plan here is near total thyroidectomy. Clear? Clear with the follicular carcinoma of thyroid? Yes, I'm going to the next one. Okay. Next one is medullary carcinoma. Very important medullary carcinoma because medullary carcinoma is associated with Wood syndromes. Wood syndromes, one syndromes inclined to dentistry are associated with, yes, right, men syndromes. You have different types of men, men 1, men 2A, men 2B, men 2B is also called as men 3. All these are covered in your smart videos. Very, very important. So medullary carcinoma, I told you one important aspect is gene of medullary carcinoma. Which gene is responsible for medullary carcinoma? RET. RET is responsible for medullary carcinoma. So medullary carcinoma basically originated from parafollicular cells, also called as she cells. These are originated from basically from the neural crystals. So neural crystals are going to produce parafollicular cells or C cells. The C cells are going to produce this medullary carcinoma where this, the same parafollicular cells are responsible for production of calcitonin. Okay, right. So calcitonin levels are increased in which type of carcinoma? The answer is medullary carcinoma. So apart from calcitonin levels, the other levels which are increased, okay, is this, okay, carcinoembryonic antigen levels are increased according to B and L. So this is a word that is given. So please do make a note of it. Okay. When coming into the histological futures, you can see cell balls. Okay. This is called as amyloid stroma. Amyloid stroma cell balls are seen in the case of medullary carcinoma, which is very, very peculiar. The one more clinical finding, which is most commonly seen in the case of medullary carcinoma is the patient is going to have diarrhea because as you see, they are increasing in the tumor cells. The tumor cells are going to produce prostaglandins and 5-hydroxy tryptophanin. Okay, this is responsible for occurrence of diarrhea. Okay, diarrhea is a very, very peculiar feature that we see in the case of medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay, you can see parafollicular cells, the diagram, which is already discussed in our WhatsApp activity. Right, clear, right? Mode of spread of medullary carcinoma is by Papillary is by lymph, follicular is by blood, and mode of spread of medullary carcinoma is by both. Okay, then coming to the last one. The last one is called as anaplastic carcinoma. This anaplastic carcinoma, is it differentiated carcinoma or undifferentiated carcinoma? All the things, whatever we have learned till the point are differentiated carcinomas. The prognosis of differentiated carcinomas is very, very good. Okay. Whereas anaplastic is an undifferentiated carcinoma. Undifferentiated carcinomas, the prognosis is very, very bad. So that is the reason why A for A, it is aggressive and it is lethal. The patient can survive only within months. It is very dangerous, it means. Okay. The mean, the mean survival rate is three months. Okay. It spreads to lungs like your papillary carcinoma and the mode of invasion. What is the mode of invasion? The mode of invasion of anaplastic carcinoma is all everything. But initially during early stages, during early stages, the mode of spread is by local infiltration. That is your direct invasion like your basal cell carcinoma. But once the initial establishment is done it spreads both by lymph as well as by the blood so it is anaplastic the last one undifferentiated carcinoma spreads by all modes but if they are very specifically asking then you have to go for the answer direct invasion which is the method of invasion of your basal cell carcinoma so normally if you take your gross section the gross section will be firm and white in color okay when you see fnac fnac is going to give sorry fnac is going to give uh FNAC is going to give multinucleated joint cells. Okay, long-standing neck swellings are one of the etiology for occurrence of this. Okay, and the treatment. What is the treatment that we have discussed? Symptomatic treatment for this case, palliative treatment. Particularly, you're going to start with the radiotherapy. Okay, right? Clear? So, which is the most dangerous of all the, all the carcinomas? 
of tighter and our plastic which is the most coolest coolest in the sense which is very good comfortable yes papillary carcinoma the prognosis is very very good and our plastic carcinoma the prognosis is very very bad